as a compositor, I worked on, you know, where the wild things are, mm -hmm. um, Harry Potter, yep. uh, Class of Titans, Tinker Taylor, which was one of my favorite yep. movies, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Mount e oh, Everest, as the movie is called, was yeah. kind of um, my one of the kind of bigger compositing jobs mm. that I worked yeah. on. Uh, I was a yeah. lead on that. And um, um, what else? Um, <laughs> of, uh, I mean, then when you go into supervising, most yeah. famously, I've been the Icelandic supervisor mm -hmm. for Game of Thrones. Hi, and welcome to the VFX Artist Podcast. On today's episode, I have Jerry Arnason, an Icelandic VFX supervisor. During today's discussion, I'm looking to find out more about his journey into becoming a VFX supervisor, as well as dis to discuss his role on big shows such as Game of Thrones. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, Kofi. Oh, hi, Jerry. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Finally. Finally, well, yes. <laughs> yeah, finally. Thank you so much for taking your time out. I know you are very busy and yeah, it's just, I'm very appreciative of your time. No, it's my pleasure. Uh, mm. I'm flattered that you're interested <laughs> in uh, talking to me anyway. So yeah, I know. I'm very, I'm very um, intrigued and impressed basically ever since we, re we connected on Instagram recently. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I guess based based on mutual interest in the VFX uh, world, I guess mm -hmm. um, I, I I've I looked up on on your Instagram and I realized what you do and it's very intriguing and it it relates because I I although I work in the VFX industry as well as a match move artist, I've always wanted to be an on set data capture. Mm -hmm. And then um, later on, I realized it's quite demanding um, when you have a family. So I didn't, I chose not to pursue it in the end. So, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's still a world that intrigues me. So I wanted to know mm -hmm. more about it. So mm -hmm. if you don't mind, would it be possible to introduce yourself and just let people know what you do? Sure. Uh, so my name is uh, Jörn de Rappen Arnason, or, yeah. or Yuri, as everybody calls me. Okay, yes. Um, and I'm a VFX supervisor based mm -hmm. in Reykjavik, Iceland. Mm -hmm. uh, I work maybe 50% here in Iceland and then 50% yeah. abroad, um, yeah. all kinds of places. So uh, yes. um, uh, my background is I came from post production, um, although I've always been quite quite uh, involved with onset things. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, due to here in Iceland, we 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 are quite a few, you know. Yeah. So we yeah. need to kind of be jack of all trades as well. Okay. So um, I started um, dealing with onset stuff very early in my career okay um i then um, probably the, the the biggest part of my post-production uh, career was uh, as um, a compositor okay. and uh, yeah and i worked uh, for almost five years for framestore um, okay. which had a department here in in iceland okay um which my uh, good friend um founded when he came back he's an Icelandic guy called okay. uh, Dade Einarsson and, and he had been working for um, Framestore in London for many years okay. and when he moved back he basically opened up a department here mm -hmm. so um, and that kind of um, kind of my work with Framestore kind of cemented and kind of gave me the hours and the years in um, yeah. work, working on high-end Hollywood movies and sure. big commercials and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, just to give some people, just to give people some context, mm -hmm. are you able to tell us um, some of the shows that you've worked on? Uh, yes, I mean, as, uh, so, so as a compositor, mm -hmm. I worked on, you know, Where the Wild Things Are, mm -hmm. um, Harry Potter, yep. uh, Class of Titans, Tinker Taylor, which was one of my favorite yeah. 
movie is actually um, mm. uh, Mount e- oh, Everest, as the movie is called, was yeah. kind of uh, my one of the kind of bigger compositing jobs mm. that I worked yeah. on. Uh, I was a yeah. lead on that, and um, um, what else? Um, <laughs> of, uh, I mean, then when you go into supervising, most yeah. famously, I've been the Icelandic supervisor. Mm-hmm. for game of thrones um yeah. scanning here okay, like yeah. we've we've done a, a lot of um really really large scale um uh, 3d scanning or mm-hmm. photogrammetry scanning mm-hmm. um and um also i've supervised for black mirror and um, mm-hmm. yeah i mean i uh, yeah tons of uh, <laughs> yeah. T- tons of pretty good shows i would definitely yeah. say Okay, but yeah. but like uh, yeah, I guess I'm probably always most famous for for my uh, work with um, Game of Thrones. I mean yeah. that that is a big series for sure. Yeah, so. of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd probably like like to touch touch on on that later on. But I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just curious about um, what if if you don't mind explaining what a VFX supervisor does in in the role of VFX. <laughs> Well, you know, it it it, it, it it's uh, I wouldn't. Say, it's probably one of the the lesser contained uh, mm-hmm. job descriptions uh, yeah. in in our world because mm-hmm. I feel like most other things is kind of quite defined nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But VFX supervisor. I mean, you you you're basically the dad of of either the project or, or the dad of a on set uh, capture yeah. situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you basically do is you go in and you work as a, kind of like a technical producer slash mm-hmm. director in, in defining, you know, in prep, you kind of help, work with the producers and the director in terms of uh, what they want. And you kind of uh, then start working with the various logistical and technical people in terms of how, how to achieve that. But this, the first task is to de- define what, what are we doing? What, what's our aim here? Yeah. And then, then you start building a plan from that in prep. Yeah. And um, once you have that plan, then you um, crew up. You know, usually I, I do a lot of stuff just by myself. But mm-hmm. if, I, if it's some of the bigger jobs, I, I might have an assistant with me or a data mm-hmm. wrangler with me. Yes. Sure. Um, um uh, and you uh, you basically you know get in touch with all all of the heads of the other departments that you need to be be uh, working with and, and yeah. co- coordinate between those you know uh, yeah also you are quite involved in in uh, kind of what we call breaking down scripts and so basically defining what what should be visual effects and mm-hmm. Okay. And then, then defining how those visual effects should be to arrive to a number which can become a bit then that you can send to them and they can uh, start yeah. looking at the financing for that. Of course, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it but, sounds like, yeah. yeah. There's, a lot, there's a lot involved and a lot of responsibility as well. For um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's not a... It's not a I mean, it's a it's a great fun job, but it's it's definitely uh, there's a lot of pressure on a, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the time. I mean, it's kind of if, if for for um, I can imagine that your viewers, a lot of them are in post still, you know. So we all mm-hmm. know the the three months long crunch, you know, where we you're steadily working overtime, yeah, yeah. constantly uh, for three months or whatever. How tiring yeah. and and yeah. and exhausting that can be. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time you avoid that in the supervisor yeah. role but mm-hmm. in, instead you get maybe the equivalent of, of a month's intensity in a week or something you yeah. know so it can be very very high pressure yeah, yeah. but uh, if you have uh, maybe the personality that that kind of rises to that mm-hmm. then then you'll have a lot of fun yeah but but if you don't like the press yeah you, it won't be too much fun nothing yeah, of course. Uh, because it it's not gonna go away it's yeah. it's just yeah yeah so um yeah. yeah yeah i'm just very curious about how you ended up in the 3d or vfx industry as in 
I mean, did you always know that you wanted to, to work in 3D or when did you realize that you want, you were interested in, in that field? Um, so, I mean, I actually wouldn't say I'm particularly 3D now, mm -hmm. but even yeah. though, of course, as a supervisor, I work with yeah. all of it, but, mm -hmm. but kind of my, my, my grounding is, is compositing maybe, yes. but yeah. Yeah. I actually used to do uh, quite a bit of 3D before I went mm -hmm. into comp compositing. Yeah. Um, but I, I think like, uh, you know, I, for com in kind of complete chance, I ran into Photoshop uh, right. 1.0, you know, yeah. way, way, way back. Yeah. And then, you know, you, uh, you know, you had maybe a couple of schools that were doing good, like CG animation and stuff okay. like that, mm -hmm. but you didn't really have any real VFX yeah. schools mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. So no, and you know, we didn't really at that time, you know, uh, the word VFX wasn't really even mm -hmm. all, all that known, you know, yeah, so, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and, and what that entailed, what was behind it, mm -hmm. you know, but as soon as I ran into Photoshop, I, I kind of, I fell in love right away, you know, it was oh, yeah. like the, the, the tool I've always uh, wanted yeah. my whole life without yeah. knowing, you know, so, of course. yeah. So I got pretty good with that uh, yeah. pretty quickly and got into the advertising agent, mm -hmm. uh, industry in mm -hmm. Denmark I was living in Copenhagen then okay and um, I got into uh, uh, some higher end agencies there and and those agencies were very involved in doing like interactive uh, CD-ROMs was the mm -hmm. rates back then you know yeah and through that my one of my um, one of my superiors there was was uh, working on um, on anime 3d animation so mm -hmm. that's how i kind of got involved with that first mm -hmm. and then the 3d animation systems were extremely expensive oh yes um uh they i think like a soft mass license was like fifty thousand oh, yeah. dollars or something like that you know? yeah so of course yeah it, it wasn't for it for an individual mm. to kind of jump into that and yeah of course also i learned about the um, through my my friend, I learned about two guys in Iceland called mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dade, who I ended up working for in Frame Store. Okay. Uh, Dade Einarsson and uh, and uh, Aron Hjaltason, mm -hmm. who's yeah. uh, who's the uh, creative director of uh, Frame Store mm -hmm. LA now, mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, and. Yeah. Um, they they were working in a company here called Oz in in Iceland called Oz, which were yeah. kind of the first um, visual effects slash TV commercial animation graphics company outside of London. Mm -hmm. um, so um, <clears throat> uh, through my friend there, I kind of got a little bit of an insight to, to what what they were doing which yeah. I thought was super, super exciting. Yeah. And, and um, from there on, I kind of just went deeper and deeper into it. And before you know it, like around the 2000, I was doing regular freelancing. And um, then I, you know, I've run a couple of companies in my time, you know, and with different, um, different kind of uh, emphasis. Yeah. But but around kind of like maybe two thousand two or something, mm -hmm. I I was basically working as a compositor um, okay. full time. So yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, how how big is the the VFX industry in Iceland? It's very small. You know, right. it's maybe I don't know. Maybe we're yeah. like three three four hundred mm -hmm. individuals at yeah. the most. You know, and yeah. it, it's it's a very then you're almost like including people that are maybe more in gaming, but yeah. have worked in, in, in visual effects as well. And mm -hmm. so the gaming industry is pretty big here, but the yeah. visual effects is very small. And mm. this, this really, uh, you know, that's not really, that's one real company with a big post-production. My company doesn't have a big post-production. Okay. Um, I will be doing more, uh, post production going forward, but mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I would say it's basically it's me more as as a onset service provider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
uh, like a, or, or a supervisor okay. so it's because i have my partners in denmark for example who okay. who uh, have a big post production okay. so yeah uh, so i do uh, do post production but most of the like the heavy 3d and stuff is done yeah. in denmark then I get um, sure. um but but yeah i would say it's mainly two companies doing the big uh, jobs here mm -hmm. so Oh, yeah, and sure. my main my main jobs here in Iceland are all kind of foreign, you know. So it's oh, yeah. these these big titles that want to film in Iceland. Mm -hmm. and they want to scan some environment. They want to do mm -hmm. some plates, yeah, and stuff like that. And that's where I come into the. Picture. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. Because yeah, I'm looking <laughs> looking at your feed on on Instagram, I, I realize you travel quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so um, as a as a VFX supervisor, how what's your um, day to day, like as in on a typical day, how many hours do you work? Yeah, I mean, a typical day would probably be like uh, wake, waking up very early, you know, mm. like uh, five, six or something. Yeah. Get, getting ready and mm. then, um, you know, being on set super mm. early, like seven, and then yeah. start, start rolling the cameras, maybe nine. Mm -hmm. And then you roll. It depends where you are in the world, you know, okay. because it, it there's different um, rules for what a film, what a whole day is. Like in mm -hmm. in Scandinavia, it's eight hours. In okay. England, it's ten hours. In Iceland, mm -hmm. it's ten hours. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's uh, it's twelve hours. In yeah. China, there's no rules. It's right. just they go oh, twenty four oh, yeah, hours. <laughs> yeah. You know, which I've done also. So um, oh, yeah. Um, uh so yeah so you do your filming and that usually involves you know quite a lot of work like quite intense work you're super mm -hmm. busy the whole time you're making yeah. notes you're doing measurements you're you're talking to departments you're standing by the monitor discussing mm -hmm. issues with the director yeah. uh, making decisions on the fly, fly. Uh, hopefully there's a good plan and the plan yeah. is kind of working but in general, you, the only consistent thing you can really rely on is that the yeah. plan will never be ex executed exactly as you mm -hmm. planned it because, you yeah. know, life will always throw you some curveballs. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be able to make decisions uh, mm -hmm. as they come along. Yeah, sure. Um, then once you're done doing that, depending on if you have, uh, if you're alone or if you have assistance and stuff like that, then when you get back, you need to back up all your data. You yeah. need to, you need to usually sort your notes and uh, like uh, write them up. Maybe you maybe yeah. do some shorthand on set, mm -hmm. and then you need to do them better once you get back to the hotel. Yeah, and yeah. then then you basically uh, maybe drink half a beer and crash <laughs> of uh, exhaustion. You know, of course, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. then we go again next yeah. day. You know, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But do you think it's it's something recommendable for someone that's looking to get into that field i mean how does it work yeah. with your family life for example is it recommended yeah but i mean i i have five kids mm -hmm. so i would say this job is both extremely family unfriendly but mm -hmm. it's also very friendly i would say so okay but yeah, I would definitely say you need a good wife for sure because course, you're, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna disappear and you're not gonna yeah. be able to, yeah, that's oh, true. you know, almost not even talk on the phone, you know, yeah. for some some periods, you know. So, um, you need a very good spouse to of kind of course. back you up for yeah. with that. Um, but I yeah, have five true. kids and mm -hmm. and and when I'm so between jobs, mm -hmm. I have quite a lot of free time and a lot of. Uh, mm -hmm flexibility and mm -hmm. and and you know i, I mm -hmm. try to um try to kind of use that to mm -hmm. to you know and it, it's very nice uh, having yeah. those like you, i can spend days with my kids and mm -hmm. and stuff like that which maybe people who are nine to five are not mm -hmm. able to do you know so yeah of course yeah um but yeah, also cool. your kids need the routine. So you're not like going to yeah. school and taking them out of school mm -hmm. or anything like that. Yeah. But, but there's other, you know, you, you have other options. You can mm -hmm. do stuff that, that other people can not do. Yeah. And, um, and also another thing for me, that's very nice about the, uh, 
about the onset stuff. I wouldn't say supervisor stuff, but yeah. more like the onset stuff. A lot of the time, uh, because I'm executing somebody else, else's plan mm -hmm. and they are going to take care of the post-production. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time I do my hand off of notes mm -hmm. and data and so on. Mm -hmm. And then I'm clear, you know, yeah. then I don't need to, then it's out of my system. And mm -hmm. I, I'm sure course. you know yourself yeah. how you can for months and months have these problem shots in the back yeah. of your head and, <laughs> and you're sit, sitting in your living room with yeah. your family, but you're yeah. still trying to yeah. uh, uh, find a solution for yeah. your work, you know, so, yeah. so I don't get that when I'm doing the onset stuff, when I leave the set and leave my, and I do the handover. Yeah it's kind of like it's out of my system and i can yeah, sure. be completely uh, yeah makes sense full yeah. attention on, on my family and stuff of course so, yeah 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 so, yeah so what what do you have to do to ensure that everything goes right on set um and like as as well as what advice are you generally giving to to directors or studios with when it comes to i mean everybody yeah, I mean, everybody is, you know, you need to, you need to follow, I would say, as a supervisor, you should basically take your pers personality traits and try and maximize them. So mm -hmm. uh, I am, I am quite a, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in the other departments, I'm very interested in filmmaking in general. Mm -hmm. I have, I think I have a quite I'm, I'm quite uh, well versed in storytelling and, yeah. and kind of the finer points of, of, of the artistry, so to speak, yeah. not, not so much the craft, but the yeah. artistry. Yeah. So I would definitely say I have a lot of success with kind of interpreting directors and talking yeah. to them and, and okay. they really, they really mm -hmm. respond positively yeah. to me. Of uh, there's definitely much more uh, data um, mm -hmm. um, data focused guys than me for sure. I mm -hmm. of course make sure to get the data that's needed and yeah. and if I have time I get extra data like anybody. But you know I'm approaching it more. Uh, my personality is more to go to set and be there. Be and yeah. I would definitely give that as a uh, as a as a important advice, mm -hmm. advice is mm -hmm. to uh, make sure that you're very in Involved. the now and you're mm -hmm. very much present you know mm -hmm. don't for, don't um, you know get lost in making notes and mm -hmm. and you know organizing your data and stuff yeah. like that that's all important yeah. but what's even more important is that you're there and you're mm -hmm. you're kind of taking everything in in terms mm -hmm. of uh, what's happening and in yeah. terms of what conversations is going on yeah um uh it, not that it's ideal or anything but forgetting a piece of data is is a is a is better than than not hearing an important conversation right. on on set you know okay. so so um for me it, I, i'm the kind of personality and I, I get along with people quite easily um so uh i tried i think i'm very good at being present and yeah. of course with the years and stuff like i i i become quite calm you know i i'm, yeah. I'm not uh, yeah. It takes quite a bit to kind of stress me out, you know, course, which yeah. is, uh, yeah, that's what you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, to be stressed out is really never helpful, mm -hmm. even if you are, you can't, of course, do anything about yeah. it, but, yeah. but it's definitely something you should try and resist as much as you can. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sure you've been asked a lot about this, but <laughs> I'm just wondering about if you're able to tell us a bit more about your work on Game of Thrones. Yeah, I can, I can, I mean, mm. uh, so the way it came about was, um, actually I met, um, I met the uh, producer, uh, the mm -hmm. VFX producer of Game yeah. of Thrones. I think I met him in season three or something mm -hmm. that was shooting mm -hmm. and then they were shooting principal photography. Okay. And uh, Steve Kulberg is his name. He was mm -hmm. kind enough to, after a long, hard day to, uh, take the time out and have a beer with me in the hotel lobby that that they were staying in mm -hmm. and we just had a kind of very informal 
talk, you know, and just talk general about the business. And he kind of yeah. asked me a couple of questions about me and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, uh, all, all good. Then really nothing came of it at that point. Um, yeah. But then when season five came around, mm -hmm. the decision was made to um, not go and shoot a couple of locations here in Iceland, not go for principal photography in, in, on these locations. Mm -hmm. um, but the, I think especially the VFX team really wanted these locations. So we, we, um, I was called in, um, oh, I actually, yeah, I actually talked to the Icelandic uh, producer um, of the production services company who were servicing Game of Thrones. Yeah. And he was kind of laying out this problem. Um, and, and I said, well, you know, I've been doing some photogrammetry. I've been playing around with that. And, you know, yeah. I think definitely you could, you could definitely um, get some good set pieces if we, mm -hmm. If we went to these beaches, it was uh, especially one beats and um, yeah, it was mainly one beats that we we did that we did a uh, a very big cliff there mm -hmm. close to the beats as well. But okay. the main problem was a fairly big beats, very spectacular beats okay. in Iceland, and mm -hmm. um, uh, and yeah, and we started discussing it and and. Um, and then we involved uh, Steve Kulbach and Joe Bauer. Joe Bauer, who is the overall uh, supervisor of Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. um, and um, and I did a couple of kind of proof of concept scans for mm -hmm. them. Yeah, and they they liked it enough to say, okay, let's try it at least, you know. Okay, yeah. And so we did. Mm -hmm. And it actually turned out pretty well. And that was our first scan. And that was um, that was for the um, for the uh, climactic scene in season uh, season five called Heart Home, uh, okay. uh, as I, if I if I remember right, mm -hmm. where they are basically landing. It's a beach landing, basically. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So what they did there, they shot this the scene in a in an Irish uh, old abandoned uh, quarry, mm -hmm. like a mining quarry, yeah, and dressed that. And then they got my digital assets, which was all these really unique uh, cliff uh, rock formations, mm -hmm. and they basically kind of maybe used them as Legos to dress the scene okay. with those uh, assets, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that that was kind of uh, that was kind of um, the foundation of a workflow that mm -hmm. turned out to be very successful yeah. through yeah. through the scenes. And then, of course, the big I did uh, uh, it got bigger with the um, so season six I was not involved with, but then mm -hmm. season seven they asked me mm -hmm. to get involved there, and um, uh, then we that was even bigger you know and mm -hmm. a lot more scans and stuff yep. like that and i was also uh, a little bit involved with the mm -hmm. uh, plate shooting there so yeah, we were okay. scanning and shooting live action plates mm -hmm. uh, from a helicopter uh, in okay. the same flight basically yeah um and then um uh, yeah and then season eight we kind of stepped it up another gear you yeah. know and yeah. I, that's when i made made my my by far my biggest captures you know and oh, yeah, also the most most crazy mm -hmm. uh, plates yeah uh, i've shot so far you know yeah of course are, are yeah. you always capturing on from the helicopter or do you tend to do very some... much yes right. i mean mm -hmm. i do do drones as well mm -hmm. but you know very often and this is i've got got at least uh, one job coming up now that's the mm -hmm. same kind of thing that yeah. we start making we start planning both out you know and mm -hmm. we start calculating both and because um with the drone in iceland you the locations are often very remote very difficult mm -hmm. to get to yeah so that means that if you're going with the drone approach mm -hmm. then you need super jeeps which are very expensive to yeah. rent and then it's going to take days yeah whereas if you jump in a helicopter you mm -hmm. can get it all done in one day yeah. you don't need any of these super jeeps no hotel yeah. no food no mm -hmm. extra days work on me and so on mm -hmm. so it 
more often than not turns out to be uh, cost effective to use yeah. the helicopter. Yeah, sure. And also I use an uh, absolutely amazing pilot uh, mm -hmm. called uh, Jon Kjartan, yeah. uh, nicknamed Spaden or the Blade <laughs> as it's in, called in, yeah. in uh, English. And, um, yeah. And he knows, uh, like he knows Iceland like the back of his mm -hmm. hand. So we yeah. can be flying in in the highlands, mm -hmm. and and we might be done with our main targets. And now mm -hmm. we're just looking for targets yeah. of opportunity. Okay, yes. And he'll know he'll know mm -hmm. like the most crazy stuff, you know. So yeah, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And we're kind of three guys that have done this. You know, there's a, a producer called El Ale Casada, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, it's me and then it's uh, Jon Kjartan, the pilot. Yeah. yeah. And and we're kind of uh, the three amigos. We yeah. can solve it all really yeah, with course, a helicopter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, sounds like a good team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um I'm just curious, what are the the fun or the worst parts of, of being a VFX supervisor or being on set days of capture? Uh, the, so um, the worst, I mean the worst is the same as for any people mm -hmm. I feel like it's when you feel like you're you're not performing or you're yeah. letting down or mm -hmm. or or not even not even maybe you nothing to do with you just the mm -hmm. weather is not there or whatever you know that's all you always feel bad when when mm -hmm. things don't come off you know yeah. for whatever reason mm -hmm. you know so um uh that's always kind of a a bad feeling um, yeah um the best part of uh, being a supervisor mm -hmm. i mean on the on the other side the best part is when when maybe you run into some difficulty and and, and you manage and you manage mm -hmm. to solve it on the fly yeah and sol solve it really well yeah and then you'll get so much love and and mm -hmm. uh, appreciation from your yeah. director and your producer and stuff like yeah. that so yeah so that's probably you know it's it's a uh, kind of a euphoric high after yeah. that you know if you rap i remember i had had a shoot like that in mm -hmm. berlin and i was i was like on a high for yeah. for for the for the rest yeah. of the trip of there you know yeah of course it went yeah. so so well and i was yeah. very stressed for that shoot so mm. you know yeah, so yeah. it's it's definitely a job for a little bit of a if you're a little bit of a adrenaline junkie for right. sure you know i yeah. can't say that it's it's definitely not a approach yeah. for stable oh yeah uh, yeah <laughs> stable yeah. normal life that's yeah. not what you're gonna get with this yeah. that's for sure uh, yeah sure yeah. yeah of course oh, yeah i'm not gonna take too much of your time um i'm just wondering do you have any memorable moments um so far well i have very many memorable moment mm -hmm. moments in the helicopter because mm -hmm. uh, our, our pilot is also like a, a kind of um hollywood like he he yeah. is an extreme pilot like he's yeah. very good and he'll fly into fishes you can right. see some of it on my instagram you know yeah. and um what you don't see there though mm -hmm. is uh, what's going on in your stomach and stuff like that <laughs> you know and uh, yeah I, I'm often queasy for two days afterwards. Oh, you know? yeah. But yeah. so far I haven't puked, which yeah. many do, and uh, yeah. I'm hoping to keep my record so yeah, far. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but um, memorable moments is mm. is uh, both the successes, for example, in Berlin uh, with uh, Bart Timmer, the the, mm. the director, and um, um, and Sebastian, the DOP, uh, mm. like my dinner there was absolutely, absolutely yeah. delightful. It <laughs> yeah. was a beautiful moment. Everybody yeah. was so happy and yeah. and good food. And and like uh, another moment was um, a scan we did for Mandalorian. We uh, we we landed on the side of the what used to be the youngest mountain in Iceland. Then it was only. Uh, five years old and it was mm -hmm. way up in the highlands mm -hmm. i've never gone so far into the highlands right. and mm -hmm. and we landed on the side of this volcano yeah. uh, which was five years old and it was yeah. it was just like yeah. being on the moon or something course, you know yeah. Uh, yeah and then i did 
two months in China doing mm-hmm. a, a, a movie which was also mm-hmm. like that will be with me for the rest of my oh, life. Yeah, sure. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, amazing. Um, <laughs> what advice would you give to someone or anyone aspiring to do what you do? I, uh, I mean, be brave, be mm-hmm. honest be brave work hard that's yep. definitely uh, all all of these things you need for this mm-hmm. um uh you would you know be honest uh, you know call call for help or mm-hmm. you know let let people know when you're when you're in a pickle and mm-hmm. they'll you'll be surprised how how like yeah. filmmakers it's real family it's kind of almost like being in the army mm-hmm. you know we yeah we're all in together you know so yeah, sure. um yeah and if you want to try and get into it you know be be the type of guy that's uh, not too worried about what what you're gonna get out of it but uh, be more worried about um what how can you deliver the best you know okay, yeah. always mm-hmm. and and if you do that then then the people that you're working for they'll make sure to make uh to reward you both with better and better jobs and, yeah. and hopefully hopefully also uh, better and better income you know so yes, uh, yes yeah okay amazing thank you so much for for your time i've i've learned a lot and i really appreciate just well yeah, my time. pleasure thank you. and 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 good luck with your uh yeah with your career as well Kobe, course, and yeah. uh, maybe you. Maybe you'll uh, maybe you'll reevaluate the, your, your <laughs> thinking around the VFX supervisor. Role. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, right now I have my two-year-old son, and yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I, like you said, you need you need a supportive wife. My wife is supportive, but she'd rather me being around. Of right. course, and, yeah. and that's I mean I can say speak to that. That of mm. course I've missed out out on a lot of. Mm-hmm. stuff that i wouldn't want to miss out of mm-hmm. really you know because yeah. i wasn't around or something but you know that's uh, this is a little bit life you know you you yeah. you and if you dwell on that stuff then you mm-hmm. can maybe get a little bit um yeah bummed out about that but yeah. i've had uh i have five kids so yeah. i've had um yeah of course five takes to of kind course, of maybe yeah. try Make, and get the experience yeah. in there yeah. you know so yeah um yeah yeah but yeah. but uh, yeah thanks for uh, inviting me and uh, no, it's a pleasure to have you thank you and yeah 